Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's object talk. My name is Lisa, and today I'm going to be sharing an object from the Jewish Museum London's collection. Now, this object is part of our designated collection of over 40,000 objects that show the diversity of Jewish life and history, and our programs exist to explore connections between faiths and cultures. Now, the object I've selected today links to both World Religion Day, which is on the 16th of January, and the Jewish festival of Tu B'Shvat, which is on the 17th of January. So I'm going to share my screen now so you can see this object. Brilliant. So this is the object that I've selected for us to take a look at today. So just take a close look and what is the first thing that you notice about this object? Does it perhaps remind you of anything that you might have seen before or that might be familiar to you? So this object is actually a mezuzah and it's made from bronze and we can see that it is in the shape of an olive branch. So you have the main stem of the olive branch here, which is the actual mezuzah case. Then you have five different sort of leafy fronds with three little olive fruits that are attached, extending upwards. And we have the main branch of the olive, uh, the olive tree has a sort of metal plate with two little holes attached to it so that the mezuzah can be attached to the doorpost. Now, we don't know much about this specific mezuzah other than that it was made in the 20th century, most likely by the Horowitz brothers in Frankfurt, Maine. Now, I mentioned before that I've selected this object for World Religion Day and for Tu B'Shvat. Now, World Religion Day is an international day of awareness that was started in 1950 by the Baha'i community in the United States. It has since spread throughout the world and is celebrated each year. And as I mentioned, this year it is on the 16th of January. Now, the aim of World Religion Day is to promote understanding between different faiths, as well as encouraging people to learn about different religions and to celebrate their common values. So I've selected this mezuzah for today's object talk from our Judaica collection to kind of highlight these themes of Judaism. So I'm going to share a little bit about uh, mezuzahs in general. So the word mezuzah means doorpost in Hebrew. And a mezuzah is seen as the symbol of a Jewish home. The most common place you would see a mezuzah is on the right-hand side of the front door of a Jewish home. And it's most often at an angle pointing towards the inside of the house. Some Jewish homes will have a mezuzah affixed to each doorpost inside the home as well, except for the bathroom, as this is often seen as being disrespectful. Some Jewish people will touch the mezuzah as they pass, and some will touch the mezuzah and then their lips as if it was a kiss. The case of the mezuzah can be made from many different types of material, including silver, wood, clay, stone, ceramic, and pewter. And they can have different designs or patterns or take different shapes, as we can see here, made from bronze and shaped like an olive branch. Now, the most important part of the mezuzah is actually the scroll inside the case. Inside every mezuzah is the Shema prayer, 
which is handwritten by a sofer or scribe on a small piece of parchment. The Shema is seen as being the most important prayer in Judaism because it reminds Jewish people that there is only one God. A sofer who would write the parchment inside the mezuzah is a specially trained scribe who is responsible for handwriting holy texts using a special quill and ink. The parchment on which the sofer writes is made from the skin of a kosher animal, traditionally a goat or a cow. And the special ink, which is used to write the holy text, is traditionally made from a combination of materials, including gallnut. Scribes will normally write texts, including the Torah, Tefillin scrolls, and the Megillah scroll for Purim, and the Shema prayer, of course, found inside a mezuzah such as this one. Using a mezuzah is a mitzvah. It's a commandment because it is written in the Torah to do so. And traditionally, when someone moves into a new house, they have 30 days to fix up their mezuzah onto the doorposts of their home. A mezuzah must never be completely sealed shut as it does need to be checked every seven years to see if it is damaged, the scroll, or if the writing, the letters are flaked or damaged, because then of course it would not be kosher and would need to be fixed or replaced before it's used again. Now, this object, as I mentioned, also links to the Jewish festival of Tu B'Shvat, which is coming up on the 17th of January. Tu B'Shvat literally is the 15th day of the month of Shavat, in the Hebrew calendar. It is seen as a new year for trees. There are four new years in Judaism, and one of them, Tu B'Shvat, is the new year for trees, or the birthday for trees. Tu B'Shvat began, has its origins, actually as an agricultural festival for Jewish farmers, and is linked to the rainy season in Israel, which begins in September, October, around the time of the festival of Sukkot. The rainy season there tends to last until around the 15th of Shabbat, after which any crops that would emerge after this date, after Tu B'Shvat, would be considered the next year's harvest. So Tu B'Shvat marks the earliest date in the calendar that trees will begin a new cycle to bear fruit. So this, these sort of various agricultural uh, kind of facts led to the rabbis deciding that this would be the best date for the new year for trees. Tubishvat has taken on more significance for many Jewish Kabbalists since the Middle Ages up until today. It was during the Middle Ages that the tradition of eating a variety of fruits and nuts on this festival actually began. And this is something that is still practiced today by many Jewish communities who have a sort of Tu B'Shvat Seder, and they celebrate the day by eating different types of fruit and nuts. So in particular, things like figs, grapes, pomegranates, dates, and of course, olives, as we can see depicted here on this beautiful mezuzah. Other ways that Jewish communities today might celebrate Tu B'Shvat would possibly be to plant trees, to donate money to environmental charities, or simply just spend some time outside in nature. So it's been really wonderful to share this unique mezuzah from our collection with you to highlight both World Religion Day and Tu B'Shvat. And we do hope that you will join us next week for a wonderful object talk by my colleague, Adam. So see you next week and have a lovely day.